Mittefed Drixen is now officially the new Prime Minister of Denmark. Yesterday she delivered an 18-page coalition agreement to the Queen, and it's bad. It looks like a complete capitulation on immigration. Now, let me just recap a few things. In 2011, Denmark had made great progress on stopping mass immigration. The electorate swung to the left. Helle Thorning Schmidt, the head of the Social Democrats, became prime minister. During the campaign, she said she was not going to reverse any of the progress Denmark had made. She reneged. Then in 2015, the electorate dramatically snapped back to the right with large numbers of working class Danes who traditionally voted for the left, now voting for the right, and in particular, voting for the Danish People's Party, which got 21%. So for the past four years, Denmark has made dramatic progress on immigration. And for at least the past two years, the Social Democrats, under the new leadership of Medefed Drixen, have been aggressively rebranding themselves as an anti-immigration party. They even voted for the paradigm shift legislation package several months back. This made repatriation the primary focus of Danish immigration policy over integration. Now, in the lead up to the election, Fredriksen said that she was hoping that the rest of the Red Alliance would make the Social Democrats a single party minority government. The Social Liberals said they would not support any coalition agreement with the Social Democrats unless they made major concessions on immigration. The Social Liberals are a mass immigration party. Fredrickson said she would not concede anything on immigration, even at the expense of becoming prime minister. Well, from what I can tell, it looks like she conceded everything. The coalition agreement most reflects the language of the social liberal platform. Now, they came in fourth place with less than 9%, but they look like they were the big winner in the election now. In particular, Meta Fedriksen during the campaign said that the Danish workers are being squeezed by two sides. On one side, you have large numbers of non-European immigrants living on welfare that the workers have to pay taxes to support. Meanwhile, the employers can go to other EU countries where wages are lower and recruit people who will work for less, thus undercutting the Danish workers. The social liberals favor mass non-European immigration as well as mass foreign workers. And they got what they wanted on both fronts. Now, the coalition agreement has six parts. Part five is about immigration. I'm going to go through it in chronological order because I think it'll make more sense that way. Part one is about alleged man-made climate change. It says Denmark needs to be a world leader in fighting climate change and lead by example. And it starts off with some very hysterical statements. Uh, global temperatures are surging. Sea level is surging. Arctic ice is plummeting. Uh, plants and animals are on the brink of a mass extinction event. Uh, the Danish people are dying of air pollution. So they start off by saying, in order to stop climate change, the world needs to spend 90 trillion Danish kroner over the next 11 years. Now, that comes out to about 14 trillion US dollars. And the agreement says this is actually a great business opportunity for Denmark. All this money, China and India and all these other countries are allegedly going to join in and spend money. And then it says that by 2030, emissions in Denmark need to be 70% lower than what they were in 1990. And it says that the technology to do this doesn't even exist yet. So in the coalition agreement, they agree that in the next 10 years, they're going to invent new technology to lower emissions. And then they want to ban the sale of new cars that run on gasoline and diesel 
starting in 2030. And, but don't worry because there's a bunch of talk about new bicycle paths and electrified public transportation. Part two says that Denmark is to become the number one place in the world for children. And they're going to pile on spending on schools and daycare and mental health for children. I can only assume that socialist insanity is making their children insane. <laughs> and then it says that they're going to up the minimum standards, but they're also going to do away with performance culture and not rely on grades to evaluate the children's performance. The whole thing sounds very contradictory. Part three says that Denmark is one of the wealthiest and fairest countries in the world because of their generous welfare system. Welfare makes Denmark wealthier and fairer and more welfare will only make things better. And in particular, they want to make Denmark one of the greatest places in the world for the elderly and the retired. Part four calls for a fair and responsible economy. However, this is the part of the agreement where they pivot from worker's paradise to corporate paradise. It says that Denmark has a labor shortage and the labor shortage could only get worse unless we give employers quick and unbureaucratic access to foreign workers. So this is about the EU workers that the Social Democrats campaigned against. Part five is immigration and integration. And it starts off by saying that the immigration crisis can only be solved by a Europe-wide and a global effort. Denmark can't do it on their own. They can only be a partner within the global community. This is in sharp contrast to section one where Denmark is supposed to take front and center and lead by example worldwide on climate change. Suddenly, when it comes to securing their own border, well, we, we can only uh, be a piece in the puzzle for a global effort. Now, it pays lip service to repatriation. It says that we're still going to repatriate failed asylum seekers and people with temporary residency permits don't actually get to stay forever. They have to leave when their permit expires. But then it basically calls for rolling back all kinds of immigration restrictions and reopening the border. It calls for Denmark to immediately begin accepting EU quota migrants again. It says that refugees who are gainfully employed actually get to stay. So they're not actually going to repatriate them. It says they want to make immigration law less complex and less bureaucratic, which just means that they're going to strip away restrictions and rules and make it easier for people to come in. It says that they need to reform asylum to make it safer and fair. And it talks about migrants risking their life to try to get to Denmark and being exploited by criminal gangs. But it doesn't actually say what they're gonna do about this, what reform actually means. It's very cryptic. But you can go to the websites of some of the members of the Red Alliance and they spell it out in their platforms. They want Denmark to go all over the third world and scoop up people that they deem to be refugees and just bring them back to Denmark. That appears to be exactly what this coalition agreement is advocating. It also calls for integrating the Danish schools. It says it should be easier for migrants to bring their children to Denmark. And then once they have their children, their children become a golden ticket because it calls for special treatment of migrants with kids, even if they've been denied asylum and ordered to leave. And remember how Denmark was going to build an asylum center on a deserted island for the worst of the failed asylum seekers? Well, that's canceled. But you know what is on the table? 
building up Africa. And above all, it very clearly says that integration is the top priority, which is not what the Social Democrats voted on several months ago for the paradigm shift legislation. Part six says that Denmark is one of the greatest trust-based societies in the world, and they need to restore trust and confidence in Denmark's politicians and Denmark's taxpayer-funded media. Well, something like 73% of Danes voted for parties that campaigned on keeping immigration either super low or making it even lower. And instead they got this. So I don't think that this is very trust building. All right, click the like button, post a comment, tell me what you think about this. Please consider making a donation to this channel as YouTube has mass demonetized all my videos. And please support my sponsor, Patriotic Flags, the online flag store, patriotic-flags.com. And click the subscribe button, new video every few days.